Now, with the latest from Libya, back to Alex in Tripoli. Alex. Thanks, John. Now, while the rebel claims of a vast underground network of tunnels here may be a tad exaggerated, there is already no doubt there's an awful lot down there. So whilst the celebrations have been continuing at the Colonel's old compound, we decided to get on the head torches and get on down below the party. Hello. <laughs> They're everywhere here, tunnels and happy Libyans. I am not uh, Mr. Gaddafi. <laughs> He may not be Mr. Gaddafi, but our descent into Gaddafi world begins nearby. The bricked up entrance to a tunnel which leads who knows where, but we're going to find out because the rebels have opened it up. You hit the bottom and start hiking over the golf buggies used to get around here. And then off a side tunnel, this. At first, it seemed just an office. But then we saw it's full of broadcasting equipment for studio cameras. Plans for a remote controlled camera system from Radamek of Chertsey in Surrey. Beta cam tapes lying around everywhere, camera grips. We'd stumbled across nothing less than an entire secret underground TV station. Nearby, what we soon realized was the bombed out TV studio. Racks of tape players. Along another tunnel, a green room area, sitting room, kitchen, bathroom. A computer mainframe protected by heavy steel blast doors. All of this perfect for a dictator to address his people at zero personal risk. Above ground, the daily party's underway. I feel great. I feel everybody's great, you know. Today's soundtrack, Gangster's Paradise. 50 feet below, we pressed on. And on. And on. This one's a little bit smaller. It led to something extraordinary an underground luxury apartment, clothes still in the wardrobe, the Colonel's green book, and then a mini gym next door. And, uh, hey, look what we've got here. Wow. Luxury pink fitted out bathroom. And that is some bath. Now, I don't know who this was built for, but it certainly wasn't built for ordinary soldiers or officials belonging to the old regime. That's for sure. By now, the heat was unbearable. We realized we were underneath a collapsed palace, so recently bombed, it was still smoldering. And when you come out here, you can see that NATO clearly thought this was a place of some significance and decided to alter it. We walk back through this outdoor party and meet the extraordinary 12-year-old Myra. Why did you come here today, why? To, uh, to celebrate that Gaddafi is gone and we're here to hold this amazing, amazing flag and uh, to show the people that who's winning, not him, we are. Our little journey has been from the dark, paranoid world of the old regime to the brightness and hopes of the new Libya. What do you want to be? I want to be a doctor to help the people. Uh, because uh, when being a doctor here uh, makes your heart more, uh, more cosy and you feel that you did something great in this world. This party will go on for some time to come.